Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Erwin Stirr, Ken Hayes, Philip Shane, and brand new patrons, Will, Andre, John, and Eric. Welcome on in, everybody. Will, Andre, John, and Eric. On this episode of DTNS, it's Mobile World Congress, and we have a transparent laptop, a Samsung Galaxy Ring, and the rejuvenation of OnePlus. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, February 26th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, CEO and co-founder of Scorbit, and of course, host of All About Android. Host, it's written as All About Android. Host of Android Faithful. Is <laughs> that a even, test to that. see if I would notice? <laughs> it's 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 just muscle memory. I didn't even catch it either. Yes. Host I the of co- Android Faithful, Rod Richards. Hey, Rod. Hey, it's good to be back. Yeah, I think this is my first time being on the show since Android Faithful launched. Oh, no, second time. But um, yeah, no, it's great to be here. Great to be, uh, you know, it's an exciting time to talk about Android. Indeed. Yeah. Lots and lots of stuff. Uh, uh, we're only going to touch on the highlights today. If you you want the deep dive, uh, Android Faithful, is that going to be, what, six hours tomorrow? Or it's, it's, um, we were just talking earlier today. We're very scared of tomorrow's rundown. It's yeah. going to be, uh, we did like, we're going to have to be really, really hard on what we talk about tomorrow. So. Yeah. No, uh, but the, they will do, they will do it. They will boil it all down for you. Uh, but let's give you, let's give you the top line, starting with the quick hits. At Mobile World Congress, Google announced new features coming to Android products. You'll be able to access Gemini's chatbot in Google Messages in English. A feature rolling out to Android Auto can summarize long text messages for you while you're driving and uh, give you context for your group chats, as well as suggest replies. Uh, Global users of Lookout, which reads out descriptions of images you give it, will be able to create captions for images that don't have captions or alt text. Users will also be able to ask questions about the image. So it'll tell you what it is, and you could say, well, is there a cat there or whatever? Uh, You'll be able to point your camera at something in maps and get more information about it. So that lens uh, stuff is getting expanded. Support for handwritten notes is coming to docs on Android phones and tablets, so expanding the platforms. Uh, And Output Switch now works with Spotify. So if you've used that with YouTube Music, it'll work the same way with Spotify. You can change from headphones to speakers seamlessly. Google Fitness now supports more data sources like MyFitnessPal and Oura. And finally, access to passes and tickets in Google Wallet uh, will not just be available on the phone. You'll also be able to show those on your Wear OS watch. An Android reporter from multiple blogs, as well as the co-host of Android Faithful, Michelle Rahman, posted on X that version 1.2024.052 of ChatGPT for Android includes a home screen widget. The widget lets you send text, images, a voice query, or start conversation mode. And you can find out more about this on Tuesday's episode of Android Faithful. Indeed. Uh, Mistral is less than a year old, but it is trying to position itself as an alternative to open AI and Anthropic, uh, and it's getting a lot of attention. Uh, it incorporated in May. You probably know it for uh, raining money on itself, uh, as well as being founded by folks from DeepMind and Meta. Now the company has launched Mistral Large, which is its alternative to GPT-4 and Claude 2 available in English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian. Uh, Mistral Large is, like GPT-4, it's a thing you can use as a developer or an enterprise. So the way they charge for those kinds of things is $8 for a million input tokens, $24 for a million output tokens. Uh, a, to- a token isn't exactly a syllable, but if you think of like, oh, that's a million syllables of text, that gets you a rough idea of what that means. Uh, and for comparison, GPT-4 charges $60 and $120 for equivalent numbers. So Mistral Large, much cheaper. Uh, Microsoft will offer Mistral Large to its Azure customers. That's right alongside GPT-4, Meta's Llama, and others. Azure has been very cross-platform in that respect. And Mistral is also launching a chatbot, Uh, more like ChatGPT. You can access that in beta for free, at least while it's in beta. It is called LeChat. Which, because this is a French company, makes me think it's the cat, but it's lechat at chat.mistral.ai. And at Mobile World Congress, Qualcomm announced a suite of new products. And bear with me as we go through this juicy stuff. Uh, The Qualcomm AI Hub has more than 75 pre-optimized AOI models developers can deploy for use on devices uh, with Qualcomm Snapdragon processors, obviously. Qualcomm will will also demonstrate an on-device multimodal models running on Android and Windows. 
The stable diffusion with low rank adoption is considered the largest multimodal model to run on device. Say that three times fast. The Windows model will have more than 7 billion parameters, uh, and Qualcomm also showed off the X80 5G modem, which has satellite communication capability and some software to optimize connections, even when, even when at the farthest edge uh, of the range from a tower. Uh, and then there's Fast Connect 7, the Fast Connect 7900, which integrates Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth, and UWB in a single chip. So Qualcomm uh, bringing the goods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, always, as they do uh, at, at Mobile World Congress. Uh, finally, here in the quick hits, everybody's been criticizing Apple's compliance with Europe's DMA and DSA, frankly. Uh, one of those compliance methods may be under investigation. Um, if you recall, we mentioned before on DTNS, Apple will no longer support progressive web apps in the same way that it does now in Europe. Right now, uh, iOS lets you download the architecture to make it faster to launch. Uh, so a progressive web app, even though it's it's really just HTML can work in the same way as a native app with features like notifications and local storage. EU's rules say that Apple must allow for alternate browser engines. And Apple says doing all the work to allow progressive web apps architecture with alternate browser engines isn't worth the trouble. It isn't worth the cost to integrate. Uh, so they're not going to do it. They're just not going to let any progressive web app uh, safe locally, lest they run afoul of the European Union rules. Uh, so the European Commission told the Financial Times it's investigating that policy and has sent Apple requests for information on what they're doing and why, as well as asking several app developers for their perspectives, probably app developers of progressive web apps. Uh, let's get to the smart ring. Samsung, Samsung uh, mentioned a smart ring, the Galaxy smart ring, in its Unpacked event earlier this year, and they are showing it uh, at a media briefing at Mobile World Congress. However, it didn't let the press take pictures, meaning there's some detail there that they don't want being examined uh, under widespread scrutiny. They did release stock photos, so whatever they're trying to hide is out of view in the stock photos, I guess. It'll also measure heart rate, track sleep, and fertility. Samsung's head of digital health, Han Pak, so said Samsung is considering a subscription plan uh, if this goes well. So you could, you could pay for Samsung Health to get you some more tracking and things to go along with the ring. Company also uh, may add contactless payment functionality, so you could pay with your ring. Uh, they're working on blood pressure and glucose monitoring possibly through the ring really really pushing the the health and fitness app aspects of this uh samsung galaxy ring is promised to launch sometime this year they, they didn't give us a date they didn't give us a price really didn't give us a whole lot of details they did tell us it'll be available in sizes 5 through 13 uh which they will market as small to extra large uh, they did not announce battery life, but they did say that, you know, there will be larger batteries in the size 13 ring than the size five. So the battery life will be a little longer uh, for that. Uh, what, Ura, if you know anything about smart rings at all, which a lot of people don't, but if you do, you probably know Ura. That, that's the leading uh, member of this category uh, is, is saying we welcome competitors the way scared people do when their monopoly is almost overturned. What do you, what do you think of this, Ron? Well, yeah, I mean, I think and we talked about this when, when it happened on Unpacked. Um, Ura has to say that because it validates the product fit. Right. Um, you know, because right now the average person on the street does probably does not know smart rings exist, much less, much less could name Aura. But then Samsung comes along with a smart sure. ring. That's a major brand. That's a major company that they expect. So it for my and, and from my perspective, this validates the whole product category. And from here, we're going to see, you know, there's been rumored that Apple's been looking into one. You know, we're going to see other companies start, start kind of looking into this space. Um, so while Aura is you know might be a, you know kind of you know scared of this they should also be glad because competition breeds innovation breeds you know that sort of thing and maybe they could get acquired in the process so we'll see but um yeah that that's an interesting thought um Bl bloomberg's mark german says apple is not actively developing a ring uh, which implies that that's something they've looked into and they haven't killed the project, but they're not advancing on, maybe still waiting to see yep. what the market does. That That's kind of an Apple playbook thing, right? You know, For wait sure. until a Samsung yeah. does it. Um, I do think that the problem with Samsung doing this, it's not really a problem, but the, but usually what happens when Samsung does something like this is all the people who have Samsung Galaxy S or, 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 or foldables, you know, the flip or the fold get very excited. A bunch of them buy rings, but no one else does. Uh, and, and so 
being able to have cross compatibility, I think would be a big boost for this, but that also isn't really the way Samsung plays things. But I can counter that with two words and you said it in, uh, as you're running through the details of it, glucose monitoring. Mm -hmm. There is an entire population of diabetics and people who are health conscious who need to manage their glucose. And we talked about this on Android Faithful when uh, when uh, the the rumors of this ring or not rumors, but the the, the acknowledgement of the ring's existence uh, was first mentioned. Um, there are there are people who would change would leave iOS and leave whatever Android phone they're doing and go to Samsung to get glu uh, accurate glucose monitoring in a ring form. Yeah, and, and it that, would be worth the cost. To it do so. 100% worth the cost. If you think of and, and I'm not diabetic, I don't know what goes into it. I mm -hmm. have friends who are diabetic. I know that there's lots of costs, there's lots of material, test strips, and all that sort of stuff. If with just getting a, an effective ring that you can wear that could do that, that would be enough to get people to jump and come over to Samsung. That That yep. is almost a, a game, you know, it's so cliche, but a game changer, game changer. In, yeah. in, in the smart ring kind of space. Whether or not that's enough people to like give Samsung total smartphone dominance, I don't know. But the, the tech Tech savvy diabetics in the world likely would make the change purely for that functionality. If if they can get it working and yeah. approved by the various regional medical authorities like exactly. the FDA and, exactly. and, and stuff. Yeah. So the, there's some hills to climb there still. I love the idea of a ring for sleep tracking. I don't want to wear a watch uh, for sleep tracking, uh, but I would wear a ring for sleep tracking. But again, I want to use it with my Pixel Fold. I don't want to have to switch to a Galaxy. They are talking about expanding functionality to other Android devices, and I, I think that's probably something they should do and we could expect that they would do. I don't expect them to really bring it to iOS because Apple's not going to make it easy for them to bring it to iOS. So I, bring it I, bring it to the rest of Android and I'd probably be happy. The, the question the question there is how is Samsung going to treat this? Are they going to treat this like the their earbuds that are compatible with any device? Yeah, right. Or are they going to treat it like the S Pen which only works on, on mm -hmm. Samsung devices or, you know, or something unique and, and they, you know, because Samsung does love the ecosystem lock-in, right? Yeah, which they do. makes Which makes sense in Samsung. Korea it may not make as much sense here, um, but so you yeah. know that's that's the real question whether or not they'll make it available. And then of course it's it's the the, the question we always have, which is the battery life, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because I, I doubt the, I don't think the reason why they didn't allow photos in the media event is because the ring is hooked up to a very small cable that goes to a battery pack that you wear like a, like the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be pretty horrible. It's actually uh, two rings. One ring is the battery. The other ring is all the sensors. <laughs> <laughs> One battery to rule your ring in this particular case. Uh, no, and I don't think they need to do something like that. These things are pretty pretty battery efficient. Um, just real quick, the last thing I wonder is like, what are they hiding? Why wouldn't they? Is it the, is it that the form factor isn't finished? You know, is it is there some some piece of proprietary tech? Because Ura is also out there going like, we have so many patents. I don't know. I don't know yeah. why I'm mentioning that, but we have a lot of patents, Samsung. Um, what what do you what is your best guess? I mean, just the fact that it's not launched, right? Like the so they're releasing stock photos. We see what it looks like. There's some yeah. level of of acknowledgement. It's not like they're high. Like we don't know what it's, it's a ring, right? We don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I mean, it's not like it's not bright pink, right? Like it looks like a metallic <laughs> ring. Um, but I think just the fact that they are teasing this and giving little exposure, and they're trying to build up, you know, this media event. You know, obviously is to get the media on their side. They want to control the look. Yeah, exactly. And they're and then they're going to they're going to officially launch it. The question going back to your question about interoperability, the thing with Samsung and Android is you always wonder where on the spectrum does this exist with Samsung's relationship with Google? Right? Because sometimes right. it's Samsung's on its own island doing its own Android thing and then sometimes like most recently on un Unpacked when you've got uh, you know, Hiroshi Lockheimer up on stage with Samsung on and there's a great partnership. So if there is a chance that this is a Samsung Google kind of partnership to bring this to Apple and health and, and does all that sort of stuff, I could see why they're holding it close to their vest because everything's got to be vetted not only through Samsung, but also through Google. So. All right. We got, we got so many other mobile world Congress announcements. Uh, let's, let's do a little bit of a lightning round for some of these. Uh, Xiaomi launched these out Xiaomi 14 outside of China, it launched it in China last week. Uh, you, if you need to jog your memory, the 14, Ultra is the one with a quad camera, lenses from Leica, and that new one-inch type Sony LYT900 sensor. Uh, you also get uh, that on the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. So it's, it's all about the camera. Uh, you can get it outside the U.S. now. Uh, so elsewhere besides China, the 14 Ultra is going to cost you 1,500 euros. 14 starts at 1,000 euros. Takes on, takes on the Xiaomi Ultra. 
I, I mean, it is well, true. Ul- it, it, it ultra is the right adjective they chose for it. It, it, it. This is a dang nice phone, right? And they've got a um, <clears throat> they've got two colorways, black and white. Um, they were sharing it on 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 social media last week when it came out of via, on via uh, uh, when it came out in China at first. Um, top of the line flagship for Xiaomi. I mean, this is the latest and greatest, right? And the fact that it's being sold outside cha- China, you know, just opens it up even more. So the fact that people can actually get their hands on it, be able to use it. Um, but th- this is this is a very, very strong entry in the flagship area. So. Uh, Xiaomi also showing off its EV, the SU7. First time they've showed it off in Europe. Uh, that, that's that been around since last year, as has the CyberDog 2, a robot pet, but they're showing that <laughs> off as well. Uh, and then they also launched a, a, a smart band, the Smart Band 8 Pro, uh, a watch, the Watch S3, and the Xiaomi Watch 2 as well. I love how Xiaomi is like this like Samsung light or like they, 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 Xiaomi makes everything. Yeah. Right. And they they're, they they used to be fully the bargain brand and then yeah. they were the mid-range brand and they're they're definitely creeping towards trying to be, you know, a full flagship, you know, cheap cheap mid-range and, and above. Yeah, they're uh, definitely climbing the ranks for sure. Yeah. And, the, and and just the diversification of the brand just, you know, gives it in my eyes more strength as a brand, right? You got more products, yeah, yeah. there's more reason to exist. So uh, the Honor Magic 6 Pro, also now available outside China, a uh, flagship phone uh, that is biggest feature is one that's not on the phone yet. They're saying later this year they will launch eye tracking. The idea being that if you look at a notification, uh, they if you look at it long enough, I guess, or in the right <laughs> way, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it will launch the relevant app without you having to tap on it. Uh, There's some other AI features coming down the pike for this one, creating videos from your photos uh, with texts, uh, suggestions based on your message text to kind of help you compose stuff, typical uh, onboard AI stuff. Magic 6 Pro will sell for 1,300 euros starting March 1st. Uh, They also announced a Porsche design version of their foldable, the V2 RSR. The Porsche design Magic V2 RSR foldable costs 2,700 euros (sighs) cheaper than a Porsche. Uh, uh, and that will ship on March 18th. You got you got to look at it longingly to get that AI, uh, eye tracking to work. Um, no, the <laughs> the, the thing of, squint or <laughs> the two things I love about the Honor Magic Six Pro or one is just the the physical the the external bezel. Uh, I love that Android phones are starting to move in the direction of of personality uh, from a visual standpoint. Uh, from a you know it doesn't look like any other phone on the market uh, right yeah, with yeah. the camera bump and all that sort of stuff. So I really like the look of it. Um, but hey, man. 56, 5,600 milliamp battery in there. That's a chonker. It is a ba- that is a battery that will never die. Yeah, uh, on that Honor Magic Six Pro. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if you know HMD at all, you probably know that it makes phones under licensed brands. M- most famously, Nokia. Uh, I think it used to make BlackBerry, but it doesn't anymore. But they still make Nokia phones, and they've got some retro Nokia stuff coming out. Uh, it should not be a shocker then that they are also going to make a Barbie flip phone for Mattel. Uh, coming in July. Not much to tell you other than it's a flip phone, not a foldable. Like this is a full on flip phone. Uh, HMD is also going to market some phones under the HMD name. Uh, That includes HMD Fusion, a modular platform that lets you make your own phone accessories. So you get the platform. It has a battery screen and six pogo pins. uh, And then Spe- think special industries like like medical, for instance, uh, a company could create its own blood test module and then you add it to the fusion uh, and use it in medical situations, for example. Yeah, we, we've been tracking this over on Android Faithful because when they a couple of weeks ago, they broke the news that they were dropping the Nokia. They, they did not renew the Nokia sub license uh, and they were going to go out on their own with HMD phones. But we didn't know what that meant. Right. And so clearly the Barbie thing is just that's just white labeling. Hey, we got the technology. Yeah. Mattel wants to do something cool. Uh, you know, why didn't you do that last year? Whatever. Um, but the I did not have a modular phone on my bingo card for what HMD <laughs> would do. Um, and those longtime listeners of uh, our old show over at All About Android on Twit or new show Android Faithful here on DTNS know that I loved the promise of modular phones. Like I wanted this more than anything in the world to take off. Um, we had the Moto mods and then, yeah. uh, you know, and they were there. Their, their, uh, LG had some had the had the modular the, the little the camera modules and the lights and things like that that you can plug in. Um, I'm going to be all over this when it comes out because I want to see what you can do with it and what you could build for it. Because like you said, medical industry, like you can make specialized hardware to work with it or just get an amped up camera or a bigger battery or something like I, I really I'm really excited about this one. 
So. Lenovo showed off a laptop with a transparent screen and a virtual keyboard. Why? I because they can. Uh, Lenovo does stuff like this. They demonstrated it identifying a sunflower. So you put the sunflower behind the screen, and then the flower stays visible because the screen's transparent, and then information about the, the flower shows up around it on your display. Uh, another use case is an architect looking at a house through the screen and then making notes for an extension. Uh, the laptop is a concept. No plans to ship it yet. Neither one of these demonstrations couldn't be done another way on a regular laptop. So I'm not sure whether this has anything. Can you think of a use for it? Uh, to live in the expanse. Yeah. That's all I want to. Those I want the bright displays. I, I want the, the transparent displays. Yeah. It, it is a step in that direction. I think sci-fi event- future it looks cool. It really exactly. does. Yeah. 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 Uh, Lenovo's Motorola also showed off a concept for a bendable device that wraps around your wrist. Uh, this is tech. It showed off at the tech world conference, Lenovo tech world conference in October. It's a 6.9 inch phone that basically wraps around your wrist. So you can also bend it to be its own kickstand and unbend it and use it as a phone. Apparently it's buggy as heck, but people kind of loved the fact that it worked at all. I love it. I love it. Please spend more R and D on this th- concept. You can, <laughs> you can fold it in the other way to prop it up, to watch a video on yeah, the upper part of right. the screen. Like a like I love it. It's zany. And this is exactly what the world needs. And I kind of love that Lenovo's like, we don't know what it's good for either, yeah. but here, sure. maybe you can come up with something. Let's show it to people. But we did it. It's possible. They're making, exactly. they're making magic over there. <laughs> uh, and they, they, they have some rollable screen prototypes and all kinds of cool stuff. There. I can't, I'm telling you the foldables are not, it's not going to stop there. The, 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 the interface, are just going to evolve and change and i'm here for it yeah uh well you know we talk about android a lot with mobile world congress and you may be like oh i'm so tired of everyone always talking about android won't anyone give apple a moment well thank goodness for sarah lane and eileen rivera's apple vision show talking about how apple's vision matches what they want uh out of apple products it streams live on monday right after dtns at youtube.com slash daily tech news show and twitch.tv slash good day internet or you can subscribe at applevisionshow.com OnePlus revealed the Watch 2, its latest smartwatch at Mobile World Congress. New watch features a 1.43 inch AMOLED display, big old 500 milliamp hour battery, 32 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon W5, and BES27 microcontroller. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, the watch can last from 48 to 100 hours. Uh, depending on what settings you have, whether you have the screen going to sleep or whatever, but still 48 to hundred hours is a pretty good range for a watch. Wear OS handles things like watch faces and apps, and that runs on the Snapdragon W5. The reason it has a second chip, BES 2700, is a second operating system. The RTOS runs on that chip to handle background operations, lighter tasks, uh, stuff like that. And that's supposed to help expand the battery life. Uh, You can pre-order it now. It's $300 and allegedly shipping March 4th. Uh, The OnePlus watch, the first OnePlus watch was was not well loved. Uh, Ron, I know you've been following OnePlus for a while. Is is this the renaissance? Are they, they building their ecosystem back up? It, it really is. I mean, yeah, you're right. The OnePlus, the fir- their first foray into smartwatch was uh, I derided as one of the worst smartwatches ever. But um, OnePlus, so I've been following OnePlus since they came out with the OnePlus One uh, way back in the day um, when they were this wacky little upstart that did crazy, weird little marketing things. And we've seen, uh, Jesus, that's been like 10 years now, but we've seen this like evolution of this brand. Um, where they're trying to establish themselves as an affordable phone, doing things you know for the user. Stock it was stock Android, then they had their own uh, you know they have their own flavor of, uh, of Android uh, on the operating system side, um, and grow up to try to be a flagship killer. And then Carl Pei, their uh, co-founder, left, uh, and that seemed to have knocked them down the latter a couple of rungs and they mm-hmm. took a while to figure out what they wanted to do with themselves. There was a lot of rumors that uh, uh, Oppo, who is a major investor in OnePlus, was just going to absorb them and they were going to get rid of OnePlus so it was just going to be Oppo and that sort of thing. You, you notice that OnePlus and Oppo share a lot of the same components and uh, a lot of the stuff that came from OnePlus's fold, uh, foldable came from research and development from Oppo, right? So they've got that relationship. Um, but uh, after Carl Pei left, they kind of were listless and just kind of going through the motions and doing some neat things here and there. They had the little telescoping camera that came out from the top and the OnePlus 7 and OnePlus 8 back in that generation. Um, And then the pandemic hit and they got, like everybody, got knocked back again on their heels trying to figure out what to do. Um, And over the past year, they're kind of 
you know, like a like a butterfly coming out of the cocoon, right? Like they're kind of like going into their their teen years. Um, not only is a more mature company that doesn't make the same marketing mistakes they made back in the day, but they seem to a couple of years ago got a product vision and now this you know beginning last year into 2024 we're seeing the execution of that product vision into what is a pretty formidable ecosystem um you know last year we saw the OnePlus open come out their their first entry point into the foldable um i know a ton of people uh deem that to be their best phone of the year for last year myself included that was my pick for the phone of the year um and then at the very end of 2023, beginning of 2024, they came out with the OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus 12R. Um, I've got the OnePlus 12 right here, um, and I've got the 12R. You know, the, the OnePlus 12 with the Hasselblad camera, you know, the, the camera system and all this stuff, great flagship phone, like a high, high level flagship phone. The, the 12R, great mid range phone, $499. It doesn't feel like a mid range phone. It feels like a, it feels like a really good flagship level phone, but at, at half the price, which is fantastic. Um, hell, they've even got, you know, they've got earbuds. I got the OnePlus Buds 3 right here. Um, so they're coming together, and then you add a, a smartwatch to the mix, and now, much like Samsung, you can live the OnePlus lifestyle by having all of your accessories be on, on the OnePlus banner and they're high quality and they're just doing a really great job. Yeah. And what are the things if I walk into a phone store and I see Apple, obviously, on one whole wall and then I see Samsung dominating in another part, uh, what what is it that would draw me over to get a OnePlus? Well, it, it, that's a that's a tough question. I, honestly, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, if you're the iOS versus Android debate, I'm assuming you're like, I don't want iOS. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna come over on Android, right? Okay. Um, and so in that case, you've got price um, at, at least, at least uh, price parity, or in some cases, a little bit of a uh, edge on price, and that they're a little cheaper, they're a little more affordable. Um, but additionally, they've got a high build quality. Um, it does, it can do everything that, you know, a Google, you know, Google Pixel can do or a Samsung phone. They're building up their own software in terms of their, their own operating system uh, marketplace. And I mean, honestly, just looking to be a little different. Um, what's super interesting and, and how they're being uh, really aggressive in this is that right now, if you go to OnePlus.com, um, they have an insane trade-in offer. Um, which honestly, when they announced that the OnePlus Open, I was at the media event and, and everyone kind of laughed and nobody believed it. Um, <laughs> but they are they will tra they will give you dollar amount trade in on any phone and now smartwatch that you send to them. So really? so it could be a Nokia candy bar phone from 2002. They'll give you a hundred bucks off the my phone, original the, Motorola Razor. Any any device they will wow. knock the, they will knock money off right. And so on the in the One Plus Twelve, it could be up to seven hundred dollars knocked off if you send in a comparable you know you know iPhone or or later released uh, you know Android phone. But even if you found a Motorola StarTac, they'd give you a hundred bucks off. Like it's it's it, that's it, crazy. Yeah, yeah, just unique kind of things and a unique kind of take on things. Um, and what I really liked, and that kind of come to life in the OnePlus uh, Watch 2, in that the fact that this has the dual processors on it, right? So it's got um, it's got the one processor, the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon, that's running Wear OS in partnership with Google. And then the other processor uh, comes in uh, to do the other functions on the watch, right? That's unlike any other, uh, you know, most Androids, you know, based uh, smartwatches that are out there. And they did that. And why this is a big deal is they did that in cooperation with Google um, in order to make Wear OS work with the dual processors and the, and the uh, you know, kind of those modes, they had to make adjustments to Wear OS to accommodate that. So much like Hiroshi Lockheimer being on stage with Samsung at Samsung Galaxy Unpacked, you've got Google standing now on the virtual stage at Mo Mobile World Congress uh, with OnePlus in this development, which is kind of like, you know, Google saying, hey, they're the real deal. Yeah, um, they're, wor they're worth our time. We, yeah, we, exactly. we're going to engineer stuff. And that, that is a really interesting uh, engineering solution to battery life. Yep. We'll, we'll see how well it works in 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 practice, but it does seem like it, you know, theoretically pretty sound. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that as well. And I will, uh, I will, I will get in a little plug on tomorrow's, and this is, this is breaking news on tomorrow's episode of Android Faithful. We actually have an interview with Bjorn Kilburn, uh, who's the VP of Wear OS at Google talking more about the watch and the partnership. So if fantastic. you want to hear more about, about Google and their involvement with OnePlus, tune into Android Faithful tomorrow and we'll run that. So. For sure. Uh, yeah. You, uh, Jason, Juan, Michelle are killing it over there at Android, oh, Android nice. Faithful. Uh, 
In fact, before we go, uh, tell folks all about where they can find that and anything else you got going on. Yeah, so uh, head over to androidfaithful.com. That's where you can find all the links to subscribe to the show and support us on Patreon and all that great stuff. We uh, broadcast live right here on the DTNS and Good Day Internet uh, YouTube and Twitch channels uh, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, it's myself, uh, uh, Huynh Dow, Michelle Rahman, Jason Howell. We get guests in from time to time. We're having a great time. It's basically the next generation of all that Android and Twit that we all did that we loved, um, and we love being a part of the DTNS family doing it. Um, and so, yeah, just go to Android Faithful com all the links are there all the social stuff you can find everything there indeed so. indeed go check it out androidfaithful.com patrons stick around for the extended show good day internet uh with baseball season coming back ron and i wanted to talk a little bit about how following our favorite sport or even if you don't follow sports anything really has changed in this world of streaming and youtube and tiktok uh so we're going to talk about all of that you can also catch the show live monday through friday 4 p.m eastern 2100 utc find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live back tomorrow talking about how Stingrays can teach us how to make robust and chemistry-free colors on soft materials. Of course, it's Dr. Nikki. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>